you. Welcome back to my channel. I have a super cute, shabby chic farmhouse DIY using some Dollar Tree items. Now, everything in this uh, project will be listed in the description of this video. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that bell. And if you love this project, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments because I thoroughly enjoy reading all of your comments. And uh, in today's video, this is going to be kind of like I said it's a little bit of shabby chic but kind of farmhouse it has kind of a vintagey feel and I'm just kind of creating a soft look with um, this canvas and I really love the double vases but I didn't love it the way that it was so I wanted to dismantle the double vased print and put it into a reverse canvas uh, project here it's just gonna be super cute you could hang it lean it on a shelf so you're going to start by taking off your canvas and again you're going to probably attack it the way that I did and just basically pull it off and I ended up always ripping the canvas apart. I never can get it to come off the way that I want it to but nevertheless you want to use the canvas so try not to rip it. So I'm using some folk art, uh, I think it's Java paint and I use a baby wipe and water to kind of dilute the paint and just kind of stain it on there instead of actually painting it. So if you don't have any stain, you can use paint and just dilute it in a baby wipe or a paper towel to stain your wood. And then I just made sure that there was no dripping anywhere. And then I set that aside to dry and now we're going to take apart that double vase canvas that I was talking about earlier. Now I'm going to keep the blue side and you can save the pink side if you like. And I'm just going around this and cutting it in a way that's kind of organic and kind of flowy. So when we place it on our doily, I know it's not something you'd commonly see as a, using a doily. Everybody thinks they're kind of dated, but I, I actually love them. I think they have a super cute feel to them and they add a lot of texture too. So I just cut it out like you see and kind of just made it look like it was supposed to be that way. Now I tried cutting this canvas with my X-Acto knife and it really didn't want to work. So I ended up tracing it out around the frame and using my scissors. Now again, you can, if you have a really good X-Acto knife, you can totally use that, but mine needs replaced. So we're just going to go with our scissors for this one. And you're just going to cut this out and, um, be sure that you make sure that you have enough around the edges because we're going to glue this back onto our frame. So I'm using a color called Timeless Gray and I'm just painting this onto the canvas. And then I'm going to add a little dab of white in a couple spots to just kind of create this marbly kind of, I don't want to know what to call it other than it's like a, a burst of color. You'll kind of see what I mean. And you're just going to swirl it around, just give it a little bit of highlight, and then you're going to use your heat gun and you're going to dry that, or you can use a hair dryer. Just make sure it's thoroughly dry when you go to add the Mod Podge, because we're going to put Mod Podge down and we're going to apply our doily. Now, I tried to position it to where I wanted it to go, and then I tested the area. And then what I did is I put down Mod Podge, laid it on, and then lifted the sides of the doily and just added some hot glue just to secure it a little bit extra. But when you place it on the back side of the wood frame and you glue it, it should hold it pretty secure. So if you don't have um, Mod Podge, you can just use hot glue. And like I said, just place it on there. I just pat it down. Don't rub it a lot because you'll want to pull that gray paint back up and you don't want that to happen. And then I just use some saran wrap to kind of dab the glue down. And then once it's dry, just make sure that everything is set completely because the paint and the Mod Podge kind of wanted to lift away. So underneath that canvas, I laid it on top of my sanding sponge so it didn't stick to the paper. And just cut your doily edges off completely and just make sure that it's not fraying or anything because you don't want that to peek through the edges on the back side of your frame. And then all I'm going to do here is add a little bit of white dabs to this floral vase that we cut out and it's just going to tone down the brightness and it's going to make it look a little bit more vintage and shabby chic so i'm just using my fingers with some white from uh i think it's apple barrel and then you're going to um take your frame and then the next thing i did is kind of line it up like i 
like I said, like I showed you here a second ago is just kind of place it and see how it's going to fit and then glue your canvas to the back side of the reverse canvas. Well, it's basically you're just reversing the canvas order. So we want to show the frame on the outside and then glue it down. Make sure it's really snug and tight. You don't have any um, flexibility in your doily or your canvas and then add you a bunch of hot glue <laughs> and then glue your vase right on top of everything and then make sure everything is dry before you go um moving it around because you don't want anything to come apart and then I just took some of my white on my craft paper here and I just lightly dry brushed it over the edges of my frame it just softens the look. It gives it that shabby kind of farmhousey vintage feel. But this is a super cute uh, piece that you could put on an accent wall. You can lean it on a shelf. You could put it on a mantle. And uh, I personally did not want to have to see a hanger on it. So I didn't do a, a wire hanger. I didn't do a bead hanger. I didn't do twine. What I did is I glued those popsicle sticks you see there uh, to the back and all I did was glue two to each other and then I glued the third one in a staggered just lifted up area on the back side and, and you'll kind of see that here in a second but it's totally up to you if you want to do it that way but it's one of my little tricks if you don't have a hanger um, to put on the back of your picture frame so this is what we have and I think it turned out super duper cute and again, please consider subscribing to my channel. I am brand new to uh, YouTube, but I do have a Facebook page where we have about 85,000 followers over there who love to DIY with me. But right here on YouTube, we're going to have all kinds of fun DIYs that you can watch and recreate yourself. I hope that you subscribe, turn on the bell, leave me a, a thumbs up and a comment. Let me know what you think. And again, I hope you enjoyed this. I think it turned out super cute. And I will see you on the next video, you guys. Have a great day.